Hello! Hiya, and welcome to the second podcast from The Lock-In with Ryan and Tom. I'm Tom Transfield. I'm Ryan McCann. And we've got the condensed highlights of our live radio show. Our show airs on Thursday nights at midnight on Bell Rig FM, and you can listen to us live by just typing Bell Rig FM into any search engine. So what did we get up to this week then, right? Well, we discussed and tried to solve some of life's greatest mysteries. That's true. We dispensed some useful advice, like always. And we messed about with our soundboard. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was a fun show. It was a fun show, and I think it's going to sound even better better as a podcast. Well, if everybody's ready, let's start the show. The Lock-In. Good evening, everybody listening in tonight. My name is Ryan McCann. Uh, who are you, sorry? My name is Tom Dransfield, and oh, you're hello, listening Tom. to The Lock-In with Tom and Ryan. Tom and Ryan, hello. But that novel you wrote, you wrote, you actually wrote the ending first, didn't you? Yeah. Tell me about that. How did that work? What happened um, there? Well, I wrote the ending, and it just said the end... And then I had to work backwards from that. And <laughs> when I say backwards, I mean that, like, I would start every word backwards. Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, so I was, like, died, sadly, um, <laughs> unfortunately, John. John. So, uh, that sentence... <laughs> oh, wait, is this is a story it, about your dad <laughs> going mad about the charity race. <laughs> so, if you read that sentence forwards, it reads, John, unfortunately, sadly, died. <laughs> That's not too many adverbs, is it? You could even no. throw in another. Yeah. I always it's use really the rule good. of three with the adverb, <laughs> yeah. because I think it's excellent. I think it really makes for good reading. That's what it So, says, it? really, I should be asking you, how did the book begin? Like, uh, what was the, the big twist began. at the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> um, the, big, the book began, surprise. That was the last word in the book, <laughs> surprise. So... Right, that sounds excellent. I'd, I'd really like to give it a read. When is that, yeah, uh, when is that out? Um, well, it came out in 2008, but okay. because we're working backwards, it still won't be out for some time. <laughs> and apparently, apparently, now, whoa, don't quote me out of context here, but apparently, if you go to prison, there is not, there is, f- f- no more, forever, for the rest of your time in prison, there are no story. vending machines, Tom. My God. Not one. Yeah. You've got some loose change and a bit of a grumble in the old stomach. <laughs> you ain't buying a Snickers I, or a Mars. Yeah. Or a boost. I read about this as well. Yeah. I was shocked. Absolutely. Yeah, they just have terrible. A, they just have a tray, don't they? Yeah. It has the same products in it. Yeah. But they don't come out of a machine. And also, my problem is that if it's just on a tray and it's someone serving you, which it is, mm. there's no chance that you'll be unlucky and it'll get caught on its way yeah. down. So it eliminates the gamble At out of time. the whole scenario. There's no chance that you could get lucky and get two. I once got two twirls. Yep. I mean, not like, obviously in a packet you get two anyway, don't you? Yeah. But I once got, so I once got four twirls <laughs> by putting in one coin. It was in, it was in a Premier Inn or a Travel Lodge or a Sleepy Nighty uh, in Newcastle. That's the thing about yeah. vending machines, isn't it? You don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, it's and risk. that's the thing, in There's prison, like, I can't believe, all right, you're already taking away your freedom and yeah. stuff. Fair enough. But don't take away my vending machine, man. But, but that's what you... keeps me out on the outside, I'm telling you. But then you have the other lottery, don't you? Because you might get stabbed in prison. So that <laughs> one's quite fun, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You don't, yeah. you don't have twelves to look forward to, but oh, might not get us back today. <laughs> the lock in. We could get our listeners to solve mysteries. Oh, okay. Have you got any mysteries going on in your life um, at the moment? I haven't got many mysteries. But <laughs> <laughs> got a few. Yeah. Okay. What you got? If anyone finds any mysteries, then um, yeah, feel free to solve them, and then that will be good when it. Oh, I would love that. Get to the bottom of them. Yeah, because we actually probably the best thing to do. We're going to be wasted in telling them our mysteries. Yeah. They tell us their mysteries and we'll solve that's them. That's a brilliant idea. I think idea. that's the problem, isn't it? If you have a mystery and we've got massive logic brains, many people <laughs> don't understand. They think, oh, those two people, they just talk on the radio and nope. they banter back and forth. No. We, there is a lot of logic to what we say. How much logic do you reckon if you were to measure it? At least um, 0.5 of a ton. And that's 0.5 of a ton of logices, which yep. is the obviously the Latin well, yeah, of course. for uh, any measured yeah, And I should say it's a amount. metric ton as well, metric so that's ton. quite a significant amount. Um, well, okay. So if you've got any mysteries, we'll definitely get to the bottom of them. I did write a poem, Tom. Do you want to hear it? What's that? It's not very good. Well, I think it could be very good. It's I, really not very good. I thought that mine last week wasn't very good, but you seem to enjoy it a lot. I enjoyed yours very much, but mine's... You know, like... The sweet innocence of childhood. Oh, like, right. yeah. You might read a poem well. that a child wrote, and it's not funny, it's not relevant, it's right. not interesting, okay. but it's kind of cute. <laughs> interesting. That's the angle I went at. All right, so you're going Ironically, for... I didn't choose Rugrats, though. No, I no, didn't. No, I didn't. I, I chose laminate flooring. And that's, and that's um, weird, because um, you'd expect mine to have the innocence of a child. Oh, it's but I just thought of the last obscene. line. I'm not even going to write it down. I'm just going to come out with it. I'm just oh, going right. to fire it out at the end of the poem. Brilliant. And it might work, it might not. Let's I'm go very for happy it. about okay, this. Okay, so, cover the floor in plastic to keep it nice and clean. To avoid messy footprints everywhere you've been. You could always go for carpet, but do it if you dare. Because it's not as fun to roll across 
on your office chair. So, folks, I do apologise if my poem has been boring, but I'm sure you will find it's difficult to write about laminate flooring. Wow. There it is. That was the no, line. Fantastic. There it was. So, sorry, what have you got? Uh, my one is just sort of, it's, by the by, you know, it's good. It's a standard poem, I Okay. Think. All right, okay. Here we go. It's about Rugrats, okay? All right, excellent. Rugrats, the adventurous tots... What do they get up to? They get up to lots. Oh, lovely. Tommy, Chucky, Phil and Lil. The ten minutes of the show they fill. <laughs> the subjects they tackle aren't very delicate, but they have to watch out for that bothersome Angelica. Oh, wow. See? So there you go. Also showing a frighteningly good knowledge of Rugrats there. <laughs> the lock-in. We've Definitely. had a couple of mysteries in, you know. Oh, really? People people apparently have got some issues. Oh, yeah, what they got? And, um, yeah, so we're looking at some mysteries. Here's one from Jack Marshall from Lancaster, who okay, says... what we got there. Here's a mystery. How do they get coke into the cans? There are no holes. Yeah, there are. Uh, <laughs> that's not really a mystery, is it? <laughs> no, it's not no, really. What, what Jack doesn't know is that um, there aren't actually any holes. It's like a complete can. Um... But uh, actually, all cans come with Coke in them already. Yeah. All types of can. When you yeah. dig cans, any soft drink. When you dig cans out of the ground, they already have Coke in them. <laughs> so um, you have, they have to drain that out and then put like Fanta in it or something. Yeah. Like that. So if your mystery was how do they get Fanta into the cans, I don't know, Jack. Yeah. I don't know, but, but I know they it, have to drain the Coke. Yeah. First. It's like asking how they get water in a potato, or how do they get hard mash in a potato? It's like asking that yeah. question, isn't it? It is. Uh, I don't know. No. How do they put? How do they put so many pips in a pomegranate? <laughs> we don't know. Jack, we don't know. But cans come with Coke in them. Already pre-packed. Yep. Fantastic. Guarantee, I can guarantee that. Dr. Pepper? No idea. Pepsi, again. <laughs> You're blowing my mind. No. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it at once. These are mysteries I can't solve, but Jack's one. No, we've solved it for him. Solved it for so you. There so there go. is a 100% success rate with our mysteries so far. And I know for a fact we've got another mystery. I believe it's from Dan Witten. Dan Witten. He's a regular uh, listener of ours, isn't he, he is. He's a <laughs> very... <laughs> um, Frivolous messenger. Frivolous isn't the word I'm looking frivolous for. Frivolous isn't... No, does that, what, does that not imply, like, flippant, maybe? Yeah. Um, yeah. Persistent. I'm a messaging. <laughs> oh, that's how he speaks, by I the way. I thought of half a message. <laughs> I'm going to send it anyway. Full steam ahead. He just says, where is Amelia Earhart? Um, have you checked her house, Dan? Uh, no, I can actually... I can Knock on her door. Um, unless, do you actually know who Amelia Earhart is? I do Earhart know who is. Amelia Earhart okay, is. Well, she was a movie actress from the 20s who yes. disappeared in a plane. Yes, that's yeah. right. Uh, now, it's <laughs> funny story, actually. Um, Amelia um, was actually... She was, yeah, she was in this aeroplane, wasn't it? Which was new for the time. Right, Women yeah. weren't in planes at the time, were they? No, not at uh, all. But this woman went in a plane. But they could sit on the wings, but that was as far as they would get. Yeah, because yeah. that was actually... Do you know how that started? That was actually a mix-up, because somebody built an aeroplane that looked exactly like a stage. Mm. And the woman said, well, can I, like, get in? And the guy said, go on the wings. And she thought, obviously, like, I'll sit on the actual wings right, of yeah. the plane. But he just meant the wings of the stage. Of course. So, obviously, she'd have been safe, warm, dry, and, like, inside the plane, that's where the that, stage plane. That's where that phrase, the wingman, comes from as well, yeah. isn't it? Because they would be quite, like, sort of masculine women. Yeah. And so, in a derogatory way, they'd call them the wingman. Yeah. And, like, that's because offensive. Because the now. way that that worked was they would... They would, because obviously a wingman, by definition, it's somebody that helps another guy to sort of like pull or whatever, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, sure. You know, um, so the way that would work is then um, they would take the wingman, this ugly woman, All right. to a woman, an- like another girl they would like to say get with or whatever, and say, hey, you're much more attractive than her, and point at the wingman, and the woman would go, oh, really? Do you think so? And that's how the relationships would always start. Yeah. So that's the Obviously, today, men have actually started doing that job for real. And, 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 and about time, I say, equal rights and everything. Well, yeah, sure. Why not? Yeah, I'm, I'm, up for, I'm all up for that. Men um, can be secretaries and men can now be wingmen as well, so why not? Oh, the lock-in. Brew? 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 Yeah. They have special brew, yeah. don't they? Or what other types of brew do they do? Um, They do Tetley's. Electric brew? Yeah. Disco brew? Uh, Tonto blue? Uh, Tonsillitis brew? Uh, magic brew? Ice cream brew? ICU brew? <laughs> uh, pomegranate brew? Computer brew? Butternut brew? Cardboard brew? Ball brew? And many others. If you're looking for some other advice on procrastination, yeah. I suggest <coughs> procrastinating until your problem goes away. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? So if you have a problem, don't think about it. Leave yeah. it. Just leave it. Do, Do it, it later. 
it will go do away. Do it later. It will be fine. And then when the time does come and it's literally like deadline in a couple of hours, yeah? Yep. Just do it, right? Very quickly. Go to your lecturer and say, listen, might not be a lecturer, probably not, probably like a tutor. Well, sure. But go to this person and say, listen, it might not be good, but Ooh. my God, was it quick. Very nice. Yes. Yeah? And they'll Very go, nice. were you listening to the lock-in? And you'll go, yeah. And they'll go, A plus. What's up, Mark? Off you, off you pop. Tom, I won't go to war. You won't go to war? I won't. What if there's a war? <laughs> I'm not going. <laughs> Say you're in a trench, you've just seen everybody die, there's a rat, what are you going to do? Um, I'd probably go through the rations. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, the rations are for, like, 10,000 men. Yeah. Now I've got all the rations to myself. Yeah. So I can like have all... Like, powdered the, egg. Yeah, dry crackers. Yeah, they're I've nice, got, actually. Have you ever had a dry cracker? I have had a dry cracker, yeah. yeah. Bit nice. dry. Bit dry. Yeah, I find yeah. that. Yeah. Um... What else would you do at the, in the trench? Um, I'd probably stack all of the hats, see how high I could get the hats to stack, um, put them in a tower. Okay, like that'd an army good. game of Jenga or something? Yeah, a bit like oh, that, okay. yeah. Just and that'd myself. be good, actually. Well, I've, I've got to pass the time, haven't I, because I'm in the trench by myself, so... And that could be like a, a monument, like a testament, if you will, yeah. to the war itself, the yeah, war proper. Yeah, that's very true. So, um, is there anything else you'd like to say about war? <laughs> war, what is it good for? Some political situations. Yeah. <laughs> that's the sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, removing dictatorship, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. It's good for that, isn't it? Yeah. The locket. Honestly, I went back to cowboy times. It's almost impossible to get in with the chief. Mm. I, to be honest with you, he was a bit arrogant. Running wolf. Yeah. Breezy wind. You know? <laughs> yeah. Smelly bear. Dr- <laughs> and drifted salmon. <laughs> <laughs> drifted salmon. <laughs> Running together yeah. against the cowboys exactly. who've got guns. You're mental. What's the point? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the point? Stop it. Um, we've got another mystery. What is it about Samuel L. Jackson that makes him so cool? He knows me. You were called the Salty Camel, weren't you? In high For a brief period. Yeah, yeah. yeah it Why was, was um... that? Why was that? <laughs> Funny story. Um, basically, it was during, uh, I think it was either year nine or year ten, I forget now. Uh, and basically, what it was, one lunchtime, I was really, well, I was really, 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 really thirsty, right? So, I drank loads and loads and loads of bottles of water. Oh, I, right, it was sure. some, yeah. somewhere in the region of about 7,000 litres of well, water yeah. I drank yeah. on this lunchtime. You were thirsty, sure. I was really thirsty. And um, it was because I had, my friends had played a prank on me oh, right. where they emptied an entire sachet of salt on my chips. An entire sachet? Mm. That's too or much. Or a sachet. Yeah. So I was dead thirsty, so I'd quickly down these 7,000 litres of water. And then we went out onto the field, obviously, like you do at lunchtime. And it was baking hot, so I'm obviously sweating quite a bit. And I mean, I'm, I'm, my thirst is near enough quenched, so I was all right. Right. And... I could see some nomads on the other side of the field, right? Sure, so I thought, yeah. I'll wander over to them, have a little chat. Well, yeah. But because it was so hot, they thought I was a mirage of a camel, right? And the reason they thought this, even when I was up close, is because when I got near them, one of them... Squ- oh, I used to have, a, like, a hunchback, like a cosmodo. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So one of them squoze that. I should, I should that. mention that at yeah. the beginning. Uh, and all 7,000 litres of water came gushing out of my mouth. Wow. Like, not sick, just, like... Fresh. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, so they thought I was, I, you know, I became known as Salted Camel, um, the legend of Salted Camel, Brilliant. one who can walk across the whole field and provide water for all. That's incredible. Yeah, that's how it happened. But the name didn't stick because a short while later I farted in geography, and then everyone just sort of like called me Global Trump. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how that changed. I want to talk about stuffed animals. Okay. Interesting. First of all, stuffed animals is in, like, teddy bears and stuff. What was yours as, all, as a let's, child? Let's get stuffed animals like teddy bears out of the way, first of so, all. So, like, you know, like, as a kid, you've got, like, your favourite. What was it? <clears throat> My favourite? Ooh, um, I don't know if I even had a stuffed animal, you know? I've really? told many people, I grew up on the floor of a cave. <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, Where was the cave? Uh, well, it was in, uh, Western Africa. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So, uh, I had a particularly soft rock that I would pretend was a teddy bear. Oh, yeah. Does that count? That counts, yeah. yeah. Tell me about the it, soft rock. What well, was his it, name? Well, it was brilliant. It had been smoothened down by, um... Your like... face. <laughs> <Yeah>. Your skin. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I just used my fingers to smooth it down. Cause it's, <laughs> it came to me very rough. So, smooth in the day, sleep with it the night. That was... Yeah. It was... There's not much to do in the, the African yeah. cave, is there? No, there wasn't. Um, especially when you're only three. So, um... I, had to, I made my fingers very bloody, but, um... The rock was quite sharp during the day, so I had to smooth it down with my fingers. And then, um... But then and have a companion at night, and it was very nice. That's lovely. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, I it, don't know. I, I've, go on, sorry, what were you Oh, mean? I was just going to say, it was about the size of a basketball. <laughs> wow. That's so nice. It took a lot of smoothing. And how, when you say soft, 
not just the texture to rub, but actually, like, in terms of its structure, like, yeah. how tightly packed its, like, particles were. Yeah, yeah. That it was so soft. Well, when I say soft, um, I should specify that I mean soft for a rock. <laughs> oh, um, right. Okay. So, and not, like, that soft rock that you find, like, chalk or anything like no. that. It was soft for granite. <laughs> okay, right. So, <laughs> so, it was smooth, but still, yeah. well, rock hard, presumably. Yeah, yeah it was. Wow. Well, yeah, rock soft. The lock-in! So, uh, what we got some messages coming in? Yeah, we've got some messages. Awesome. Uh, this is something someone asking for a bit of advice, I think. Really. Oh, well, I'm good at advice. Yeah. We're very good at advice. Yeah, you're I think. excellent at advice. Rick Kay from Lancaster, he right. needs some help. We help him out a lot, but he needs some more help. Well, Rick, you've come to the right people. All right, and he says, I have a friend, and uh, I'm not going to mention her name for the sake of privacy. Okay. Uh, but he says, I have <laughs> a friend, she thinks she is funny. How can we break it to her that she's not? I'll do it. You'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Is she listening now? Um, yeah. But we don't know her name. No, we don't know her name. Well, if she knows who she is, um, then we could just tell her now. But other than that, how could... Well, right. I'll, I'll do it right now. I'll, 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 let's just list a few names. Okay. So, uh, Amanda. Right. Um, could be that one. Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, Mary. Okay. Um, uh, Zoolander. Sure. Um, Suzanne. You are not funny. No. You are so unfunny. You're not funny, and stop bothering Rick. Yeah, because you're not funny. Yeah. Your yeah. jokes make me feel like biting someone. Leave them alone. Give them yeah, a Yeah, you're space. vile. Yeah. And you look like salt. I think we've almost solved that problem, you know? Yeah. But, how else could he deal with it? Tom? How else could he deal with it? Like, let's say that it wasn't going to be us. Let's say she's not listening. All right. How, how does he do that? Uh, what if he launched a surprise party, like some people do for birthdays, okay. and that's sort of thing? Because it's going to be news that's going to shock her. Um, everyone loves a party, so why not wait until she's gone out, gone to work, gone to a lecture or something like that, get everyone into a flat, and then uh, turn off the lights, put up some banners, and then jump out and go, you're not funny! <laughs> She'd enjoy that, wouldn't she? <laughs> That's excellent, because what I like about that is that you're not just being blunt with it, like you're softening the blow. Yeah. It's like saying to someone, well, I'm definitely going to kill you, mm. but have this little muffin before I do. Or it's like when you go to kill someone and you soften the blow. Oh, yeah. But then sometimes that can be mean, because then it takes longer for them to die. Yeah, that's true. Mm, so softening the blow isn't always nice. But in terms of this, I think Rick could benefit from... Yeah. So, Rick, the thing to do is to throw a surprise party, but instead of shouting surprise, everybody shouts, you're not funny, and then maybe someone can, like, put a hand in the Breville toaster. <laughs> that's a very good advice, yeah. yeah. And then give her some cake as well. Yeah. She might be a bit sad. Yeah. yeah. But make her eat it with the sore hand, <laughs> um, and then... Uh, for extra comedy value, just to show her what comedy really is, as she's desperately trying to shake this muffin towards her mouth or this cake. Right, yeah. Slap it out of the hand, so not only has she dropped the cake, but you've slapped her on a yeah. burnt hand. And then when she's really, Hilarious, really that. distraught, say, write a joke about that. <laughs> and then spit on her. Yeah, that would be brilliant, brilliant wouldn't it? Yeah. So, Rick, I hope that helps. Yeah. The thing is, the thing is, I think about Bruce Forsyth. Uh, you couldn't explain Bruce Forsyth to, like, an American or something, could you? No. You couldn't be like, we've got a terrible presenter who yeah. hashes all of his lines. <laughs> it tells the worst jokes. Is 80 years old and hasn't been funny for about 40 years. <laughs> and we love him. We wouldn't trade him for the world. <laughs> I would. I'd trade him for like a, a Twix. <laughs> or a Mars bar. Or a Snickers. There are many other types of confectionery that I would trade Bruce Forsyth for. <laughs> Very nice. I'll probably just trade him for 50p and then I can go to the vending machine and I've got a chance of getting two. Yeah, why not? That but you've got a chance. You've got a chance of getting none. You know what I realised as well in the break? What's that? We didn't even solve the mystery of that woman in the plane. What would we, we, just, <laughs> we just turned it into a story about ugly women and moved on. I've got a message from Dan Witten. He says, uh, tell that story. You know the story. The story of the stuff that happened to you the other day. It was a great story. Everybody listening should get their hopes up for this story. What's the story? It was that story that happened to me the other day. Um, it was weird because I started out, I was just walking down the street, right? And this guy came up to me and he just looked at me dead in the eyes. And, um, he, like, looked me dead in the eyes, square in the eyes. And then he, um, like, pulled up his chest and showed me his belly button and tried to rub it against my belly button. And I immediately backed off. You know when someone sort of goes to touch your stomach or your genitals or something, and you, yeah. sort of, you do that thing where your feet stay in the same place and so does your head. You sort of bend at the waist and sort of... So yeah. 
you try to sort of get away from them very quickly. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you retract. Yeah, I retracted because he tried to rub <laughs> belly buttons with me, and I said, "That's not okay. It's not all right for you to try to rub belly buttons with me. <laughs> what are you doing?" And he said that he was from a charity and he was trying to donate me some of his belly button fluff. R the lock-in. The topic that we're going to um, talk about now is made-up games. Yes. All right. So made-up games you play with your friends. I have a couple of made-up games. Okay. Um, one of my favourite made-up games is the game That's My Dad. <coughs> um, hey, okay, how does, that, how does that work? Well, it's when you're with... Fr- it, you can play it best with acquaintances, right? Right. People that maybe you're in class with or something, so you know them a little bit, but you don't know them completely. And then, so they see someone in the street, and they go, oh, look at that man's trousers, or something like that. You might be able to see where I'm going with this. You have to say to that acquaintance, point blank, that's my dad. (laughs) And then you judge their reaction. Yeah, I like that. It's a very good game. That is an excellent game. Very enjoyable. So, like, I could be like, oh, I absolutely hate Lloyd Grossman. Yeah, and be like... That's my dad. <laughs> so, that's an excellent game. Yep. And, like, do you ever get some good results with that? Are there any, ever, ever anything fun? You funny? You get some good results. Some people are just a little bit shocked. They don't really know what you're doing. They don't get it. But if you're with your friends instead, then, you know, they appreciate it ironically. They go, oh, Tom, I know your dad, and that's not your dad. <laughs> All right. That's funny. So it works better than if you've got, like, one mate who knows you. Yeah, probably. And then, like... A bloke who doesn't know you. Yeah, why not? Do That's it with funny, that. that is. We, sh- we could do that, because you know me. and But you don't know what my dad looks like. That's so really true. So could conceivably be my dad. But wouldn't it be funny if I just went around to your house and... Like, there's obviously a bloke sat on the couch, right. and I was like, he looks like an idiot, and you were like, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be really good. That'd, That'd be probably brilliant. work, wouldn't it? Yeah, I... It is the time for Heroes, don't you think? I think so. Heroes? I think so. Not the TV show Heroes, maybe not. I've never watched it. You never watched it? A friend of mine said I should. Never did. Don't like the friend. Why should uh, I? <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason. Yeah, why yeah. should I? I'm yeah. sick of him. I hate him. Yeah. In fact, you know what? This could be time for my shout of the week. A shout of the week. He made me Do so it. mad. I was absolutely livid with him. I can't stand him. Honestly, he said to me, you should watch Heroes. I said, you should watch Heroes over there without me because I'm sick of it. I hate Heroes and I hate you. And then I spat in his mouth because he was so shocked. He had his mouth open. And I said, how would you like that? And he was swallowing it and choking on my spit. That's fantastic. Yeah, and then I, I pulled out one of the airs from his shin. You know what I love? Go on. I love a feature called Shout of the Week that yeah. airs at quarter to three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I really like asparagus, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just think it's excellent. Right. I like the taste of it, I like the look of it, and I like the way it makes your wee-wee smell. Like, it's just excellent. I don't like the way that it makes your wee-wee, no. You know, you know I don't like the way that it makes your wee-wee smell. Not at all. Really? But then I'm not a big asparagus asparagus uh, eater. I think asparagus is massively underrated. I am a big weir, though. Uh, yeah, I know. Goodness I, me, can you do weeds? I've mentioned this to you before, and I don't know if I should say it. It's not offensive. <laughs> no, it's go just on. a bit embarrassing, but I'm going to say it on radio anyway, because, you know, I'm an honest guy. Yeah. You know, we... Okay, you think, oh, those two just get into the studio, they mess around for a bit, yeah, say some things for a bit. Say silly. lies. We don't... That's a lie. We open our souls for this radio show. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to admit something that's a bit embarrassing. Don't think of less that's of me. That's our souls, listeners. isn't it? Yeah. So, because it sounded the way you said it there, like you said, like, our souls. But, like, <laughs> it's our <laughs> souls, isn't it? We no. open our souls. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> okay. Our souls. So I'm going to open up my old souls. You're going to open up my soul. Um, Your soul. I'm going to open up my soul. Right, and... um. I'm going to tell you that I have a problem with urine smellingness. I think, in general. You, I, don't know, I don't know... If as in, that. your urine is particularly smelly, or you have a problem no, with smelly urine? I have a problem with the smell of urine. I don't know if it's a particularly heightened sense of smell that I have, or if my kidneys are deficient or something. <laughs> I don't have... Here's the thing. I don't have smelly urine. I have urine that emits a smell of what I've been eating. And it worries me a lot. <laughs> okay, like, well, what? So if you've been eating, I don't know, like... Bread. <laughs> yeah. Freshly bread. baked bread out bread, of the oven. Bread will show up, yeah. Really? I, I think so. That's absolutely... Obviously, like, I could understand, like, maybe you say, like, um, I think people say, like, uh, like honey a, or something. Not yeah. honey, like, uh, sugar puffs or some cereal. Yeah, like, sugar puffs. Um, sugar puffs are common, aren't they? Asparagus, everyone Asparagus says. is another yeah. one, yeah. But, um, like, I swear I smelt, like, lasagna the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Were you just weeing onto a lasagna? <laughs> 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 maybe. Ev- maybe... 
in every meal you've been eating for the past, say, 18 years or whatever, right. someone's been putting a bit of cheeky wee in there. So, like, you're thinking that the food smells like that, but it's because it's got wee in it. Yeah. I think... I think this is what's happened. I think every time you eat something, someone does a wee on it, <laughs> so that you can smell a combination of wee in this food. Right. So in your mind, we smell when you do a wee, it smells like the food because the food was actually covered in wee. Right, brilliant. Thing is, it's not like I don't think you're in lasagna. I just think lasagna. It doesn't smell foul. It just smells like lasagna. What about if you'd eaten like I don't know, like something like Stilton cheese? Because it's not a it's not a pleasant smell to begin with, is right. it? Um, what about that? I guess that'd be quite a strong smell. I mean, I don't, I don't have a diary of it. I don't have like a book that's no, got sure. wee smells written on the. No, front. I've got that book. No, I, um, yeah. I gave it to you, didn't I? Yeah. Um, but and I weed on it. <laughs> yeah. Now it smells. Uh, the lock in. America's far away. Yeah, I tried swimming to America. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I got to well, I got to France. I went the wrong way. Oh, what yeah, a stupid mistake, idiot. Yeah, yeah. Mm. but then I had a baguette and swam back. So it actually, it was all right. It <laughs> yeah. worked out. Yeah, it was a nice afternoon, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, I think I think those are the best types of pranks. Really, I don't really like a prank that involves someone getting no. like you know arms oh, broken no. or no. stuff. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this guy played a really good prank on me. Where he, I did, I didn't know him right. <laughs> He <laughs> broke into my house <laughs> in the middle of the night. And, I mean, like a clown outfit or something. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, it was like a clown outfit, but it was just like it was like a black mask <laughs> covered all of his face. And he thought, this really good prank, he knows that I love TV, right? And he thought, oh, I know what I'll do, I'll steal Tom's TV. That'll be funny, he'll wake up in the morning and realise that it's gone. So yeah, he stole my TV and my mother's jewellery. Yeah. Because he, he knew that would be hilarious. Yeah. And, um... Yeah, and then he came into my room and broke my arm. <laughs> <laughs> that is excellent. It was a brilliant what practical a good joke. That is. Yeah, that's so good. I love it when people like do that. Yeah, but then I don't really, you know, I don't really like the jokes where people get their arms broken or anything. <laughs> As you were saying, I prefer the jokes. If you could have a fight with anyone, including fictitious or dead people, right? Fictitious or who historical would you characters? fight? Um, I'm trying to think. Who would I want to fight now? The thing is, I'd want to fight someone I was definitely going to beat, wouldn't I? Well, would you? Maybe you fancy a challenge. Maybe you fancy someone that's renownedly tough, and you think, if I gave it a go, if I caught him unawares... What, like Muhammad Ali? Yeah. See, I reckon I could run at Muhammad Ali and punch him with my very hardest punch, all my body weight behind it. I mean, I must be, what, 13 stone? I have no idea. But I don't know how much it, I don't know how it works. No. Um, but let's say that I am. All right. Throw everything behind it. I reckon he would just look at me and then beat me to death. Without a doubt. Right. Without so a single doubt. I'm going to want to choose someone like Gwen Stefani, aren't I? But. <laughs> so, someone, that, like, <laughs> <laughs> someone that I think like, yeah, right. I'd probably take you. Um, <laughs> well, the thing is, if it's historical and fictitious, right, couldn't you fight Muhammad Ali? When he was like 11. <laughs> That's true. And then you'd be able to say, I knocked out Muhammad Ali. Yeah, <laughs> killed him dead, I did. <laughs> yeah. No, but excellent. then if you killed him dead, people would be like, who's, <laughs> who's Muhammad <laughs> Ali? And then I'd be off to jail yeah. for killing an 11-year-old <laughs> via the medium of punching. Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, maybe not a good idea. And I've decimated my calves recently because yeah. I've been trying to run ultra marathons. Yeah. As I've said, I've been trying to run massive different distances as much as I can every single day, right? And um and it's terrible. I've pretty much I run until my calves don't allow me to run anymore and then I hobble home and then <laughs> I, I <laughs> and then I can barely walk. Because it's, it's worth it, isn't it, yeah, really? Well I've got quite a high level of stamina. But I've got, like, spindly legs, spindly little, you know, toothpick legs. Yeah. And my calves are not up to it yet. No. So I figure by um, by the end of, like, a, after a week or something, I'm either going to have calves of an absolute beast or I'm going to be, <laughs> like, unable to walk. Yeah, basically. Yeah. I know which one I'm hoping for. Yeah, Because one too. of them will be really funny to talk about on the radio yeah, and the other will definitely. be you having big calves. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, that's what I'm hoping for. This radio show is an endurance race in a lot of ways, isn't it? Yep. Did you hear that the two handsomest men in England had finally gotten on, on the radio <laughs> after so many people had prompted them to? Yeah. D don't you think it's odd that um, women have to have uh, shaven underarms and men don't? No. Have you ever taken a chocolate button and melted it and made a hot button? Yeah. Mm? 
Yeah. Was it good? No. Oh. Oi, the lock-in. I have a question that I used to ask people. I'm going to ask it now. Um, anyone still listening in, please, please... Don't be afraid. That's the first thing, right? <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> no, no need to be afraid now. <laughs> Everything's going to be all right. Yeah. The second thing is just I want an answer to this question. Basically, I, I asked my mates at college this question once. I said, like, let's suppose that you could throw a boiling hot tea bag into right. the face of any animal. Okay. And that animal would respond in a voice that suits that animal, which animal would it be? So it's a complicated way of asking the question, which animal's voice do you want to hear if the animal was really upset and yeah. had a burnt face? You've asked me this question before, I, I believe, yeah. Um, but just for anyone listening, like the example I always give would be like, if you threw a, a boiling hot tea bag into the face of a badger, it'd probably be like, oh, why did you do that, you rep scallion? I can't believe it! Now I have burnt and damp fur! That's Come here, nice. like, claw you. Excellent. That's what I think a badger would do. Right. I don't know if I said this before, but I would go with Owl. Yeah? Why? What I'd would an owl, owl do, do you think? Owl? He'd be like, oh, no, I can't believe you've done that. How dare you? It's like an airborne badger, that, mate. <laughs> Is it? No, but uh, couldn't be a badger. No, an owl's more relaxed. And wouldn't it be like, like, oh, no. Owl! No, 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 no. You've <laughs> you've made a vital mistake there, Rye. Because what you've done is you've confused the s the voice that an animal would make with the sound that an animal makes. Yeah, but I think to a to a large extent, like no, 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 no. No, do you not think? No, 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 no. 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 Oh, okay then. I think that an owl, so, an owl is wise. You know, it's it's an old owl. Wise. Yeah. Owl. So maybe oh, he oh, thinks no. I better just not say anything because that's what he wants. Yeah. Maybe he's, he's throwing keep, this tea bag maybe at me. Maybe he keeps dumb. Yeah. So, choose an animal that's going to be colourful enough. I said, like, an ant would be good. Because you've no idea what an ant's going to sound that's like. That's true, yeah. Boiling hot tea bag, fresh out of the pot, throw it straight in its face. Ant would probably be dead, though. No, let's say it was big enough. All right. Either a really small so tea bag solid. or a really big ant. Actually, go for a small tea <laughs> bag. I really love the idea solid, of a really aren't they? small tea bag. <laughs> yeah, because apparently ants are like, <laughs> what a shot as well. <laughs> yeah. like, me up here, big mighty human, I'm like... A tea bag less... Smaller than the size of a pea. I'm imagining. A pea? An ant yeah. smaller than a pea? We're talking about a tea bag. In terms of relative size. Oh no, I didn't think like an ant's tea bag. Well, yeah, I guess yeah, an ant's an tea bag. An ant's tea bag would have to be. If one tea bag is like, say, a tenth the size of my face, yeah. it'd be a tea bag a tenth the size of an ant's <laughs> face. And from my manty, mighty man perch, right. I'm throwing it with enough precision, not only to hit the ant, but to hit the ant in the face. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> and Brilliant. the ant would probably just go, nice shot, mate. Yeah, yeah, probably. Really do it really well. Good shot. Mm. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> what, yeah. uh, what other animals do you reckon sound funny? Um, what other animals? Lion. I'd quite like to hear the voice of a lion. I reckon lions would be pretty casual. Really? Yeah, I reckon they'd be just like this. Yeah, because like lions, you're solid, aren't you? There's no need yeah, to also, have any personality. <laughs> they sleep like most of the day. Yeah, I'd love to be an animal that's so. Well, we be, we are, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's wrong with you? All we do is do this radio show, <laughs> and then I'm gonna go to bed now. I'll probably wake up on Wednesday morning, write a bit of stuff for this show, go back to bed, and then just come here. Exactly. I was like, I'd love to be an animal so solid that you could sleep safely all day. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, we're that animal. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember the last time. That my sleep was threatened by a wild beast. <laughs> it doesn't happen often, anyway. I can tell you that much. It really no. does not. Should we turn on our early morning voices just to see how it what's, goes? What's our early morning voices? There's, there's a button for early morning voices. Oh, is there? Yeah. Shall I join push it? Do it by all, all means. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> Alright, here it goes. Push your one first. Okay. Alright, here we go. And this is uh this is just the effect that the uh the early morning voices has on uh, on my voice in particular. I quite like it, you know, I've Listen to a few early morning voices, and this one is one of the smoothest that yeah, I've heard. It's, uh, it's easy going. It's, uh, it's good listening. And there are a few easy listening voices around. Yeah, um, this button is particularly impressive. It really turns the modifier. Not many of you know. I'm actually shouting at the moment. I'm really furious. I'm absolutely furious. I've just stubbed my toe, and it hurts rather a lot. Yes, very much indeed. Yeah, I'm in blinding amount of pain. And I think I might pass out. But <laughs> we've got the easy listening button, so you can't hear my rants and screams. You can hear the words that I'm saying, but uh, rants and screams are directly filtered out. <laughs> you, won't be, you won't be able to hear a single rant or scream. 
That's uh, it's quite remarkable. Do we have a um a DJ voice that would give us the voices of professional DJs? Um, the button that you have uh, nearest to your microphone. Oh, of course, could do right. that. Um, but uh, take it away. Okay. Well, I'll have to take off my easy listening voice, and you'll be listening to professional DJs. And uh, that was Tom there with his easy listening voice that he found on his button. You're listening to The Lock-In with Ryan and Tom. Uh, if you like the show, then why not message in? I'd like to just do a big shout-out to all of our listeners that have listened so far. Um, well done, you're a great crowd, and we really like you guys quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, um, my co host. <laughs> <laughs> my co host. <laughs> And thank you, Tom. I, uh, I really like being on the radio with you here, mate. Um, I think we're coming up with some really, really excellent stuff. Um, there are a lot of things I like about the radio. Uh, one of these things is this, this panel that we've just discovered that's changing the way we speak on the radio. Not the way that we... <laughs> The laughter button. <laughs> I can't find it, mate. Hang on, I'll try and find it now. Turn off the laughter button. <laughs> Which button shall I push instead? Which button do I push instead? Please come up with a suggestion. Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I, uh, I would like to push the Jeremy Clarkson button. This is the Jeremy Clarkson button. This is not a normal button. This is a turbocharged button with diesel. <laughs> We're about to say our final goodbye. Yeah, I think this is as good really. a time as any to say a very, very, very fond farewell to all of our listeners tonight. All right, and thank you very much. That was it. The second podcast of the second show. The second podcast from the lock-in, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a great show. Did you enjoy it? Uh, I don't know. I was eating a bagel. <laughs> I didn't really hear most of it. You missed it. I was in the kitchen. Oh, well, if you did miss it, then you can listen in again on Thursday at midnight on Barrig FM. Oh, okay. Uh, what was your favourite bit? Um, like, if I just want to skip to, like, the best bit, what? which bit? Uh, the bit with the guy. Brilliant. So there you have it. <laughs> um, listen again. Next week, Thursday nights, midnight, Bale Rig FM. We've yeah. said it all now, haven't we? Yeah, it's good. Um, oh, legal disclaimer. <laughs> um, any celebrity.